again and welcome back to Winglet Plays Nomi Factory. I have just spent 20 minutes recording and didn't have the game screen being captured. So, time to redo this episode. I have, of course, been about three months, two months, about uh, over two months since the last episode that I released. I did explain in one of the satisfactory videos that I work at the hospital and sometimes uh, when I'm on emergency rotations I do tend to really struggle with energy, motivation and just sort of doing anything other than sleeping when I'm on those rotations. But for the last week I have been logging back into Nomi Factory and getting a few things processed and up and running, fixing a few bottlenecks and doing a little bit of work. But the big thing that I have done is I have added a third pair of wings to the build. Previously, of course, it was just the two pairs of wings. Now we've got this third one to give us additional space. And given that we had Draconic available, I set up here a setup for making the Wyvern panels. And so now, with the Wyvern panels over here, with their nice glorious pink, the this single sheet here of 35 panels produces as much power as all of those two wings there of blue panels. And of course, we've got eight at the moment with more coming. Effectively, each one produces over a million. I think it's about one and a half million power. So, in this wing here, Firstly, I went and built a much a bigger power bank which can input and output 8.1 million per connection and the it stores 8.1 billion RF per tick. Sorry. Oh, it does say per tick. Oh no, I think that's just telling it saying how much is actually changing. The other thing I have done though, is I've put here some ZPM machines for some of the processes that were slowing us down and, ca and causing difficulty with our EV and IV setups there. One over here, I've got the, huh, I've got the wetware circuit boards being made here. And the and then over here, all of the rest of this is actually just automation of tungsten. This one here processes any she light that we get. This one here processes tungstate dust, which we seem to run out of hydrogen. And then over here, helium. I obviously don't have. Oops, the helium set up over here to trash any spare. Yeah. So if we put the helium here, then that will get that one up and running again. I, however, why we run out of hydrogen is the question. I thought we were automatic automatically making. We've got one hundred fifty six thousand buckets there. So. Let's have a quick look. Step one. Oh, okay, it's working again. The weird thing is, this one here is providing the hydrogen. Ins oh, hang on. Right, okay, this one doesn't need to insert. It probably got filled with all that helium uh, because we've got this one here, which is a dedicated insert for the products that we that we don't need there. There you go, Sterilite's growth medium has fixed itself as well. Good, so that's what the issue was. It was because this one wouldn't be full. Um, perfect, so yes, we've got automated tungsten here being being made, and we've got 7,000 sitting there, plus I think we've got 5,000 yeah, 5, ingots just sitting there, tungsten carbides uh, maxed out, tungsten steel maxed out, and we can always just um, increase the limits for the tungsten without any difficulty there if we do find that we're needing it. And then over here we've just sort of got some um, infinite sand production because sandstone is the thing that produces 
and we were wasting the sand that was being produced by our um, poly polymer clay setup. Uh, and then over here, this is ZPM, which is replacing the IV wetware circuit board setup that we had before. And so this is just running, well, effectively four times as fast. The Previously, the in the whole time since I had set up the wetware circuit boards, it had only made about 500. And so this system is, of course, substantially faster. And then in this side, we don't yet have anything. In fact, we also don't even have the power cables hooked up. The only thing we do have is power cable here, so, so it can run the oxygen. But otherwise, the ME cables and power cables have not yet been hooked up in this side. But we've got all of this available space. Come on, do There we go. Uh, we've got all of this available space, and of course here we can improve the speeds of, of a lot of setups. Other than that, the I haven't really done all that much. There's nothing else I can really think of that needs mentioning. I might have made these assemblers between episodes. They're not actually fully complete, but the, they will allow, of course, for parallelization or separating out of recipes as well. And then we, if we take a look at our quest book, the next step in our late game was we needed to make the wetware circuits. And the, in order to do that, we're going to need the ZPM assembly machines. This is what I spent 20 minutes on uh, before. But basically, we taught the system how to make the assembly machines. We've, we've made eight of them, and we've replaced the power on the back of our processing array here so that this can be changed into a ZPM tier instead of LUV tier. And then all we need to do is insert our wetware circuit into here, and we should be able to craft wetware circuits. Let's tell it to make 20 and obviously where so we've got the ZPM assembly machine but we don't yet have the advanced system on a chip. So that is the next thing we need to teach the system how to make and if we uh, it's obviously something we are going to want to make passively so step one we are going to need another precision laser engraver which we do have an IV tier one here. The question is whether we have space here. We do have, in fact, let's take a look at This needs to be at least EV tier. Okay, good. So that tells us that we could potentially put it here or there. In fact, this whole line is IV. Okay, yep. So we're going to need an IV laser engraver. Oh, good, I've got an IV. Cool, so, and then we're gonna need a draconium lens, a single draconium lens, and Naquita doped wave as well. That seems easy enough. The question is, do we have an autoclave with primal mana? I doubt it, but we can easily set one up temporarily. So an autoclave, let's take a look at this, it needs to be at least EV, fine. And then a primal mana, one bucket, I don't know whether that will be enough, but let's pop you there, put you there, 1,000, okay, good. So now we just need a draconium lock. Let's tell you like 100, that's fine. And then that can go into there. And apparently it's gonna take a while, 60 seconds it looks like. And then once that's done, we can then pop over to here and put our advanced precision laser engraver there. Make sure that that's not inserting. Grab a item conduit, no, not uh, item filter. And then item filter, which needs Naquida doped. Naquida doped bull wafers. Perfect, that can insert. And apparently there's already some around here somewhere. Good. Ah, that. 
That'll be fine though. As soon as this is done, we can swap it in. We can put those Nacrodoct wafers back into the system and There we go. And we don't need that autoclave anymore either. Uh, where did it go? There. Put that away. Quickly pop here. And it was this guy. Gets that. And we're getting ASOC wafers. Perfect. Now, Naquidote wafers. I'm pretty sure we don't have any limitation on that. I'm just gonna check that there wasn't somewhere here that was meant to be banging the ASOCs. Now, I think those are being made here. Let's just check. Yeah, Naquidote wafers, which are being made by that cutting machine. Which, yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll have no trouble with these. I could potentially put an upgrade on there as well, but I don't think we actually need it. And then the Naquita Bulls are being made over here, which I'm just going to check on that setup. So the Naquita Bull is Naquita Ingots and Silicon. Okay, and Silicon, show me, block of Silicon. Blocks of silicons are automated somewhere. Because 64 is a odd number to have if it isn't automated. That looks like obsidian. Yeah, we've still got 64 silicons, so I'm pretty sure that this is automated somewhere. Perfect, and silicon ingots, we've got 32K, perfect. Which, which I'm not quite sure where we're getting. Whatever, it doesn't matter. In fact, uh, no, yeah, yep, cool. So we've got, ASOC wafers being produced, and if we throw those up here, now let's take a quick look. These are used to make ASOCs. Right, okay, so we do need to get a cutting saw, do the next step of this. So let's grab a draw, downgrade, throw that there, and the ASOC wafer gets to go to there. Perfect. Um, A sock. Yeah. Interesting that this here completes when we haven't actually made the wait the A sock itself yet. Anyway, so now if we pop down here, we need a cutting machine, which also can be IV. Good. Boom. And then that gets that. ASOC wafer, in fact, let's grab that back out. We need an item filter. There is almost no chance that this is going to need a speed upgrade. Item filter can go there, throw that there, and good. Now, we just need to find a item interface that has space. Uh, well, we might have to add a new one. Yeah. Okay. If we pop around to the back here, you know, then what we can do is, you know, let's throw one right here. Disconnect that temporarily, grab a uh, interface, throw that there, good, and then this gets to have ASOC wafers, and let's say 16 of those, good. And then on the front side of that same one, which is here, then it gets to extract on brow, perfect. And then lastly, where did I put it? This one? Ace of Quafers insert on brown. 
Perfect, good. Now, the last thing is we just need it to have some lubricant as well. So, we haven't, the system doesn't have a lubricant sitting around. We do need a fluid filter, which can just go there. Now, lubricant can go there. Good. The question is whether that there is obviously lubricant somewhere around. Good. And now we've got our actual ASOX, which can then go up here. And let's say we want 2048, just like we do of all of the others. Why is HPIC stopped? Power IC wafer, indium gallium phosphide, which I think is being made back, back there somewhere. Indium gallium phosphide. We're out of phosphorus. Okay. So, in order to get phosphorus up and running again, then what we do need is we need phosphate, which is made from apatite and uh, calcium trigoxin phosphate, which I think might be the tier three mission. Let's have a quick look. The mm, doesn't look like it. Where's apatite again? Apatite or Tier one, which makes appetite or and tricalcium. This is the gemstone version. Fine. Tier one. Tier one or tier one gems. Good. Let's do that. Let's do eight and run. Which should then let's have a quick look here. Oh, it's already making them perfect. I'm just going to check that we aren't voiding the tricalcium and appetite that comes from that. I'm pretty sure we aren't because I'm pretty sure that was my source for for phosphate. Okay, you running away. Let's take a look. This here is the trash can. Guess right. Nope. And you Galena appetite trichalcium phosphate. Perfect. So those should be winding up in the system as are these about diamonds there. Awesome. So that will fix that up as well, and we'll get our HPICs being crafted again, and we should have ASOX being produced. In fact, we're producing them at a quite a substantial clip there. So if we then take a quick look at oh, wait, wait. Wait, wait circuits, we should be able to make those with zero trouble now. Using wetware circuit boards, which have automated, using ASOX, which have automated it, Naquita alloy, and is being then being used to make that quarter alloy wire perfect and apparently the wire was so quick that didn't even see it craft and then the wet west circuits are being made over here in our processing array or should be zpm ASOC. soldering out Hang on, it's quantum circuits. What, where? Oh, we need some sterilized growth medium, which we could, I wonder if we can throw another fluid input hatch. Right here, or will this be too many? Yeah, it's too many connections. Okay, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the machine, put the LUV back in place, and then we can, for the time being, just do a manual for these ZPM, these are LUV. We've got this Z-pin line over here. Okay. 
Now this can have a interface on the front of it. And I do did just realize we've left our wetware circuit pattern all the way back here. Good. And that's actually not going to work because you also need a fluid interface. Although we could we could just import it, import the fluid from the top. Okay, so then this gets to have that pattern. We may as well throw in these. And then if we take a quick look, the sterilized growth medium, which is not yet here. Oh yeah, it is perfect. So you can input, I want another fluid filter. You can input sterilized growth medium into there on brown. Perfect, don't extract. That should, there we go, and now it's running. Perfect. And then we just need a piece of fluid cable to connect this to there, at which point we will then have the pattern back up and running. And finally, that can extract onto white which currently doesn't input anywhere, but we can do this. Perfect. Good. And I'll fix up processing array later on. And possibly we just need two different processing arrays for assembly machines. Or alternatively, is there anything here that we can change? Soldering alloy, silicon rubber. Probably need both of those. I will have to go through and check the recipes and see what we want to do in regards to that. But we've, for the time being at least, got the wetware circuits up and running. Perfect. So then, in fact, we just need to take out the wetware circuits in order to complete that quest. Perfect. And then, if we take a look here at the other wetware, so where the processor is made in an assembly line with sterilized growth medium. Okay, we, hang on. That's 10 ingredients, so we can't do this here. We need the, ah, that's normal. We need the extended crafting grid, which we've got over here. Got oh, the extended pattern, um, okay. Which, so the processors, are made with that. The processor arrays are there. And the processor mainframes are here. Perfect. Now, I did notice that this needs sterilized growth medium, this needs soldering alloy, and this needs soldering alloy and water. So at the moment, I think this is the only one we can actually plug in. But if we take a look over here, so, oops, wrong row. We have soldering alloy lubricant sterilized growth medium. So we could actually put water into this one here. One, two, three, and then this just needs water. Perfect. And then, in fact, all three of these can now be made. Ah, we just need to automate a couple of extra things. Let's have a quick look. Titanium frame, cool. So that can be made here in the assembler with a config one. 
let's have another look. The thin silicon rubber sheet, I think, was something that was a barrier. Yeah, thin silicon rubber sheet, easy. So let's have a quick look there. That's just a cluster mill, which let's oops. Let's do that. Uh, and then let's grab a cluster mill EV. No, we want an LUV cluster mill, so let's go here, cluster mill LUV. And then over here, oh, hang on, we need the actual cluster mill. Okay, so then we can grab that. We can grab another interface. I think we're actually going to need a power cable as well. Okay, uh, signalum. Here at the back, good. Plus mill there. I will be back in just one moment. And welcome back. I actually wound up uh, putting everything onto passive, all of the components that we need for the wetware circuits. So. At this point, we should just be able to order and everything should be pretty much available. We probably need to bump up our draconium wire, our zombie heads, that's both of which are not an issue because zombie heads are just here. And so all we need to do is change this so that, so that it imports if there's less than 1024 and draconium wire is being made here. Oh no, it's superconductor wire. That's using draconium wire. Where am I making? That's paused. The fact that that's got 3000, I think that at some point I had this configured wrong, but I think it's set up correctly now. Draconium wire is probably being made over here in the IV tier section. That looks like it's right there. Perfect. So all we need to do is go in here, remove the downgrade, and then that will fill up to 2048. Uh, yeah. Cool. So we've got lots of draconium wire uh, coming through, which will use will burn through our draconium stores. Well, we do have 2600, but and it's slowly being produced. But yeah. Okay. The um, but yes, so wetware circuits, so I've, wetware circuits, wetware processors, and wetware processing arrays, we've now made all three of those. Awesome. And if we pop in to our system here, there we go, we've got both of those, perfect. The, now, the first and only tier nine circuit I was trying to make that and I've automated all of the re those recipes except it needs titanium ingots, which I thought, okay, fine, how hard could that be? Titanium ingots, okay, we don't have any of the dust. Let's go take a look. So titanium ingots come from the dust, okay? Couldn't find a way to get the dust. So obviously, looks like maybe you need to use this fluid. And in order to make the titanium fluid, you need a fusion reactor. And the fusion reactor uses titanium, which we've got, and duranium, which we don't. So duranium will need radon and gallium, both of which we do have. So we're going to need a two-step fusion reactor process in order to make our titanium. And so at the moment, we've actually got one fusion reactor back here, and it was making, in fact, I think it still is, europium. So if we stop both of those, show me this, it's, I don't think it's even running. Yeah, it's losing heat um, because it had already filled up all of this European plates here. If we 
grab all of those, then and we can hopefully, oh, yeah, dimium, hydrogen. Okay, so it's going to now work through those inputs there. Oh, oh right, I see. The, give me a tank. I have so much neodymium that I don't care about voiding some of it. Perfect, cool. So then that will, that'll all fill up and then we'll just throw these into the system. Perfect, but what, we, what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm going to need to make another fusion reactor. Now I did have everything set up in order to make a tier two fusion reactor. And so I might make a tier two fusion reactor in here and then we'll just set up our tier one, tier two to utilize, the, to, to make those two recipes and get access to the tritanium that we're going to need in order to make our wetware processor mainframes. And then that's the first and only tier nine circuit. So then the question is, what does this get used to make? Elite assembling machine, UV, simulation supercomputers. Seems interesting. And universal navigators, and it's used to make the Mark III fusion reactor and the max battery. So it actually looks like there's not too much here that we're going to need the wetware processor mainframes for. And so the simulation device capable of forming more complex simulations faster than ever. Okay, I'll have to have a look at that. But yeah, it looks like we're not gonna to need too many of these wetware processor mainframes. So I think we'll just manually get a stack or so of titanium, of tri titanium up and running. And then we can worry about the uh, uh, and then we can reuse the fusion reactors for other things. So that's something I'll do between episodes. I'll make our Mark II fusion reactor and I'll get our tritanium up and running and make at least a draw, probably a number of stacks of tritanium. Thank you for watching. Stay happy and healthy. And I hope to see you in the next one.